Hey guys, everything new under the sun. All right, this is a great article, a great sum uh, uh, summation uh, of this current situation, the the value of fiat currency, and uh, how it ultimately uh, comes crashing down. So zerohedge.com, an excellent article. I'll put the link in the description. I'm just going to read uh, portions of it because this is significant. This is something you need to understand. Throughout history, many commodities have been used as currency. So this is bar all part of the bartering. Cows, beads, and seashells have all been used in trade, so bartering. This is uh, also something you should be prepared with. In the event of economic collapse, you need stuff that you can barter with. Food, chickens, uh, food is going to be huge because when it gets that bad that you're bartering, uh, people are going to be looking for food ultimately. They don't, they're not going to care so much about gold and silver necessarily. They're going to want something they can eat um, or, or burn in a fire to keep warm, etc. They're going to they're require the basics. Paper currency is simply more convenient when buying a pack of gum at Walgreens, but it isn't money. It's simply an IOU. The U.S. government has designated the dollar as currency, while at the same time arbitrarily attributing some type of value to the dollar. So the, the Federal Reserve basically sets the value of the dollar. Your dollar could be worth X today, and Y to, uh, next month. The U.S. dollar has lost 90% of its value since 1950, but it's still the same dollar. And that's, that's called the inflation. Uh, inflation means that 2% each year, that's the target of the Federal Reserve and the central banks, uh, your money uh, loses 2% of its value every single year. So if you have $1,000 in the bank, it loses 2% of its b purchasing power every single year. So if you uh, leave your cash in the bank, it is losing money unless there is uh, an interest rate greater than 2% on your savings account, etc. The Federal Reserve, like most central banks, continues to print fiat currency at unprecedented speed. They're printing it out, out of thin air. There's no backing to it. There's no uh, uh, tangible asset. There's no nothing of value actually backing it. They're literally just using their printer to print dollars because they can, and no one's complaining about it. It says, as these dollars flood the economy, the value declines. As more is put on the market, uh, money is easier to get. Therefore, people are willing to spend more on the same uh, asset, the same object, the, you know, the same um, dozen eggs, or they, they've got a bit more money because it's a little bit easier to get because there's more of it, so they're willing to pay more for that same object that they paid less for before, and that's how um, the prices of things start skyrocketing, and if you have runaway inflation, well, uh, that means you're, you're uh, literally carrying wheelbarrows of money around to buy a dozen eggs. Well, fiat money has been around for hundreds of years, and many of Many of them have vanished due to hyperinflation. Look at Venezuela uh, right now. That's exactly what's occurring. Precious metal, especially gold and silver, is the only real money because it's always valuable. It's useful in manufacturing. It's held its value through 6,000 years of human history, so it has an excellent track record. It's always worth something to somebody. When currency loses its value, for anyone paying attention, the Venezuelan Bolivar has lost 96% of its value in just one year. Gold remains what it, uh, it has always been, real money and a genuine medium of exchange. So when you uh, give a gold coin to somebody, you're not giving them an IOU. You're not giving them a piece of, money, a piece of paper with $1 stamped on it. You're giving them something that that person uh, can ha hold as an asset or trade away and uh, trade for something else of equal value. <clears throat> So it's an, it's an asset. It's not just a fiat currency. Fiat is, is something that you believe that you have confidence in. It's an IOU. It's saying, I will reimburse you. You can exchange this for something real later. That's what a, a, a dollar is, basically. Gold has always been and always will be an asset. During the Web, the Weimar Republic, the Deutschland, the Deutsche Mark, rather, has had less value than toilet paper, <clears throat> mostly due to the manipulations of the German central bank. Gold is outside the age, ages of uh, any government, although many governments attempt to keep the supply of precious metal in reserve, although they call it a barbaric um, you know, asset, barbaric thing. Here's the reserve currency status uh, of uh, countries through the years. This is how long they've lasted. You see in Portugal, <clears throat> lasted for, you know, whatever that is, 100 years, 
Spain, they're all about the same. You know, 100 years, 150 years, 200 years, whatever it is, fiat currencies, world reserve currencies collapse at some point in time. You can see where the U.S. is. Britain had the longest running one, uh, pretty much. Well, maybe Spain did by that. I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, but you can see that U.S. is up there and uh, U.S. is primed and ready for a collapse with $21 trillion dollars in debt, which is unsustainable. They can't raise the interest rates because then they wouldn't be able to afford the interest on the debt uh, of the U.S. government. That's not even considering all the unfunded liabilities, health care, um, old age pensions, etc. And that doesn't consider all the other debt held by the rest of the countries around the world, which are all in debt. Everybody owes everybody else. And there's no uh, actual backing to any of this. When the fiat currency in your wallet collapses in value, gold will remain a hedge against inflation and other economic chaos. This is the idea that, um, you know, if you hold gold or silver as an example, when an economic collapse happens, occurs, um, you have value that you can hold and pull through to the other side. When the economy corrects again and gets back on track, then you can uh, use some of that gold and silver, the wealth stored there, and uh, come out uh, at, least, at least a little bit easier on the other side of an economic collapse. That's what it's good for. It's not good during the economic collapse because people are looking for food and water and fire to keep their houses warm, etc. Um, but after the economic collapse, that's where gold and silver uh, is valuable. And so it transfers your, transfers your wealth through uh, economic hardship effectively. Uh, but you need food and water to get through the economic collapse uh, or situation. Today, central banks have created unprecedented global debt levels that do not bode well for future economic health. Many countries, including the U.S., are on the brink of financial disaster. Absolutely. Uh, you know, an economic collapse should have happened in 2008. It didn't because the central bank is manipulating it, printing money out of thin air like crazy. And the other countries in the world that are just too scared or... They're biding their time. They're waiting for the right time to collapse the U United States. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to use uh, the fiat currency, the U.S. dollar, as a weapon of mass economic destruction. These governments will attempt to solve the problem by printing more fake currency and devaluing it even more. The value of gold may fluctuate according to the value of fiat currency, but it cannot be devalued at the whim of the Federal Reserve. It's not going to go down to zero. It will never go down to zero because someone is always going to be willing uh, to trade or pay for it. Gold is a genuine commodity with real value. It says it is recognized worldwide as real money. Fiat currency is a crapshoot, it says, depending on how the winds of government uh, blow. If they want to increase its value, if they want to decrease its value, etc. The only time the price of gold changes is when the amount of fiat currency needed to buy gold changes. The value of currency changes. The gold value remains the same. So the value of your U.S. dollar, your Canadian dollar, increases or decreases. And that's why um, you need more or less dollars to buy the same amount of gold. But the, gold, the, the value of gold is still the same. It goes on, it finishes here. We have never seen a national debt as we have it today. When the Federal Reserve frantically prints more paper dollars to pay off this debt, the dollar will lose considerable value. You will have diminished buying power because the shampoo you bought for $5 last week will cost you $8.50 next week. That's because the value of your money is decreasing and uh, the Federal Reserve wants it to decrease uh, because that means the $21 trillion in debt isn't worth as much and they can pay it off much more easily if it's all devalued. So there's an incentive for the Federal Reserve to devalue the U.S. dollar. This is why gold, and that's why they have an inflation target of 2%. That means the devaluing of your dollar, they want it to be 2%. They don't want it continually being devalued because that means they can buy more and more with the same money uh, before that kind of trickles down to you and I. This is why gold is the only real money. It says it doesn't fluctuate, diminish, or devalue. It is a constant, all things being considered. And it's one thing you can rely on during an economic disaster. And I would say um, the common uh, wisdom is that it's something you, that you can rely on, maybe for a little bit of bartering during an economic disaster, but ultimately its best use is to uh, transfer your wealth through an economic collapse to the other side of the economic situation so that you have some seed money on the other side of it um, to get going again. Effectively, that's kind of its best uh, mode during an economic collapse, you need uh, the ability to acquire food and water. And that's why you need to be have uh, food and water 
uh, stored up. God gives you a brain. He doesn't expect you to be stupid. He gives you a wisdom for a reason. Just like Joseph in the Bible during the seven good years in Egypt stored up grain uh, because he knew seven bad years was coming as per the prof- as per, per the dream, the prophecy that he had about Egypt, the seven good years and the seven bad years. God gave him wisdom to deal with that and to take the whole country of Egypt through that. Likewise, God expects us to use our brains, be wise, be prepared for any eventuality, and if you see something coming, like these articles, like people have been saying for years, and we had a trial run, we had a scare in 2008, um, that's gonna, that's your, that's your warning. 2008 was your warning, and it should have collapsed then. Um, you should be warned by now, and you should already be preparing for um, the economic collapse, which is to come, which I think kicks off, kicks off, and catapults us into end time Bible prophecy. Um, in a huge and dramatic and surprising and amazing and spectacular fashion. Guys, be prepared. And I've done videos about what you need to do before, but be aware, be prepared, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.